Guys, welcome back to episode six. Today, we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna be delving into the education side of it. So today, I'm gonna to be providing you with five tips on how to grow your chest more effectively. <laughs> this is the perfect cream of rice consistency. There's too many people out there that are either making soup or they're making stew. It should be like this. <laughs> the very first tip would be warming up. How you do it and what do I believe is the most effective warm up. So to be honest, when it comes to a warm-up, I don't believe that it should be mechanical. I don't believe that you should have a prescribed number of reps in order for you to warm up. And the reason why is because depending on your day and how you're feeling, you will feel differently from day to day. So I would go off more how you feel. Obviously there are generic principles that I keep in place and that would be for a warm-up, me personally, I would hang around 40 to 50% of what I'm going to lift that day. And in terms of rep range, same thing again. Me personally, I would keep it lower, but based on how you feel on the day. How do you determine this? When you're actually doing your reps, you pick the weight up. As soon as you go back, you will know based on how you feel. So, going through the exercise, the main thing that you're looking at is a connection with your chest. And obviously, you want to mitigate your shoulder. So through doing that, you'll know how many reps you're going to do with a warm-up weight. In terms of how, how many warm-ups you actually do, I would do roughly around three warm-ups and then I would go to the actual working sets. So the main thing is you warm up based on how you feel. In terms of the reps, in terms of the sets, there shouldn't be a set number in place. Obviously, don't burn yourself out. Don't do 10 sets, 20 reps, something like that. That's just silly. But you just want to get a feel for the movement. You want to engage the muscle. And from there, it's going to set you up for your top set. One big thing that people don't actually consider when they're asking the question, how do I build a bigger chest? A lot of people want to know the exercises, the rep range, all the sexy stuff. But take a step back. How do you actually work your chest? Everyone knows how to work the bicep. It's just elbow flexion. They just pick a weight up and they do it. But when it comes to actually working your chest, the way that it actually works is origin to insertion. Big words, but I'm gonna break it down. So with your chest, it attaches to your sternum. Your sternum is pretty much just this guy here. From your collarbone down to that guy. You'll be able to feel it, it's pretty hard. And I'm not getting too technical. And then it also attaches over to your upper arm. So how does your chest actually contract? If you bring your elbow closer to your sternum, that's how you get a contraction out of your chest. So if you think about that with everything that I'm gonna take you through today, that is the main thing that is going to help you get a better contraction out of your chest. Two big words that I'm gonna break down. Mechanical advantage. I don't know how many syllables. But anyways, with mechanical advantage, it's basically raising your chest in simple terms. When you're doing any chest exercise, if you want to feel your chest more, you have to raise it. And the reason why is because if we go into the opposition, which is actually dropping our chest, we're gonna bring our shoulders into the exercise more. We're gonna become more shoulder dominant. A lot of guys, when they're training chest, completely rack their shoulders. And I don't just mean like get a pump, I mean actually injure, injure their shoulders because they aren't doing that thing where they lift their chest up. So whether you're on a flat, decline, incline, it doesn't matter, you want to raise your chest. Another thing as well, if you think about powerlifters, they excessively do this. So whenever they go into the exercise, they will create the biggest arch in their back as much as possible in order to also reduce the range that they have to travel through. So that is what mechanical advantage is. A big thing about it is that it allows more chest fibers to work. The more chest fibers that you have working in an exercise, the stronger that you're going to be. So no matter what angle of bench you're on, no matter what exercise you're doing, CD cable fly, chest press, whatever it may be, always 
chest up in the air if you want to be stronger and get a better contraction out of the exercise and of course not actually injure your shoulders. This for me is one of the most important ones. This is your range. Where do you bring the dumbbells? Where do you bring the barbell? Where do you bring whatever piece of machine you're using? Where do you actually bring it to whenever you're actually on the eccentric phase, the lowering phase? Yeah, so with this, please understand that it is going to be different for every single person. Once I go through this, you'll know your range. You should know your range, unless you're a dum-dum. So a lot of people believe that you have to bring the bar to your chest for full range. And the reason why I'm doing that is because it's not necessary, and I'll tell you why. Whenever we're running through this, whenever you're doing a chest press, your range is based on how much can your shoulders actually tolerate. So how much can your arm travel back without your shoulder rolling forward? That's different for every single person. So whenever you're doing this, the factors to consider would be the size of someone's rib cage. So if someone has a big rib cage, and they basically what this is going to do is it's going to reduce the travel of the bar. So someone with a big rib cage is more likely to get away with getting the bar to touch their chest. Big bodybuilders, big guys. So when a lot of people watch the big guys and they see the bar coming down to their chest, the only reason why is because they can get away with it because they have the range. A rule to go off, and it works incredibly well for a lot of people, when you're at the bottom, I would stop whenever your elbow is literally aligned with your shoulder. Anything beyond that, and it's gonna do that thing that I was talking about, it's called internal rotation. It's putting your shoulder in a compromised position. So if you bring the bar down and you get to there, and you're like 10 inches away from your chest, you do not have to bring the bar to your chest. Some people will get to the bottom, they have a thick ass rib cage, and the bar will literally be sitting on their chest. That's the difference, guys. That's why every single person shouldn't bring the bar down to their chest. So if you don't have the rib cage to accommodate for it, don't do it. Work with what you've got if you actually do want to build a bigger chest. Because if you don't have a big rib cage and you're bringing the bar right down to your chest, the only thing you're doing is working your shoulders more and you will damage it over time. Another big one that a lot of people don't even look into would be hand positioning. Where do you actually put your hands on the bar? A lot of people do believe that because there are rings ingrained on the bar, you have to put, I think it's your pinky. It's been a while from I've heard it, but I think it's your pinky around that ring and it doesn't go anywhere else. Same as everything else, it all depends on the individual. So the way that I would go about actually determining where you put your hands would be when you're at the bottom of the exercise, drop down, make sure you're creating the right angle with your limbs at the bottom, just like that. From there, that is gonna be the part where the exercise is at its heaviest, and this is where you have to be most comfortable. So when you're, when you're down at the bottom, you're at that right angle, I want you to look across at your hands, and then from there, you're going to go up and put your hands on the bar because it's all about the bottom position, guys. So you wanna be comfortable in the bottom position. You want to have a right angle in the bottom position. So you come down to the bottom, create the right angle, and from there, slowly guide your hands up and put them on the bar. Another thing, guys, is whenever your hand positioning is too close, you're gonna bring your triceps into the exercise more. Whenever your hand is actually too wide, you'll start to feel your shoulder more and you'll notice that you'll be lacking strength. So that's why it's important to actually sort your hand position out. So guys, cheers for watching. Hopefully that was beneficial. And the thing is, when I'm going through them tips, I'm not just saying them because they sound good. They're things that are solidified. They're things that I've used personally and I would use with my clients and they have helped my clients massively with regards to actually building their chest. A little bit of an update with the gym slash office. So we're upstairs at the minute. Got the carpet done. Um, need a plasterboard that side of the place. And overall, I'm thinking of this space being pretty much an area for hosting seminars. It is gonna be the education side of things. 
But on the other end, I'm also thinking about getting a sofa, getting a projector, and just chilling with the lads. And to be totally honest with you, so at the minute I'm not too sure, but the offices are over there. So I can just work away in the offices, and then out here, I haven't fully decided what I'm gonna do yet. I'm gonna get some beautiful banisters across here, because my family say that it's not great for you know, my niece and my nephew and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, overall, still in construction, a lot of things to do. But for now, it's, um, I'm just using it as office space. The equipment, so we have seven pieces coming. I didn't run through them last time, I don't know why. I was like, I sort of questioned why I didn't run through it. I've got a cable crossover machine. Um, that's pretty epic, it's a low, it's, it's built for low ceilings. That's why I got it. Um, there's gonna be a seated row. It's gonna be a seated row that you've never seen before. It's absolutely incredible. It looks like a spaceship but it's incredible. We've got a pack deck coming. Uh, we have a, a leg press. It's a certain burn leg press, so it's super smooth. We have a seated hamstring curl. We have a lion hamstring curl, and we have a leg extension. The leg extension is specifically designed to rehab people because there's so many adjustments on it and it's just, it's incredible. So I can't wait till that comes. So yeah, we have seven pieces coming. When are they coming? I want to say around five to six weeks because they're obviously being shipped from America. It is a bit of a process to actually get them onto a container and then get them across over here, from here over to the unit. So yeah, it'll be around five to six weeks, all being well. From the last video, I actually got my food increased. Um, I didn't actually count, but at the minute, I'm roughly around 5,500 calories on a training day. Um, with regards to me, I had a PB, so I got 75 kg dumbbells up yesterday, and I've never lifted that before for 11 reps. I was very happy with that. But overall, I'm pretty happy with where I am. My coach says, help me, I need you to stay lean in order for this to actually work. So at the minute I'm around 104.8 and around that we still need to go to 110 kg before we can actually strip back down and actually put me on a stage. So that's where things currently are. I mean I feel good, I feel alert, I feel energetic. I don't feel like I'm bulking and I'm really sloppy and you know everything like that. I actually feel good at the minute. So yeah I'm pretty happy with where things are. My coach is happy with where things are and overall Life's great. If you've got to this point in the video, hopefully you didn't skip forward and you watched everything. Hopefully you did pick up a few tips that you are going to incorporate. And guys, do me a favor, please. If you did find this video beneficial, only if you found it beneficial, could you please share it to your Instagram platform? And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. So when I do bring out videos, you will be notified.